Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Freedom Collective Secret Sauce. Today we have Sarge and myself, and I am so honored to bring on Chris Yuakim, who we call the Wellness Warrior. And today we're going to dive into the benefits of health and staying healthy and well. And also we're going to talk a little bit more about your body and how important it is to keep moving during these times of lockdown and also how important oxygen is to us. Of course, we, we use oxygen, oxygen to breathe, but Chris has got more information about oxygen. So before we bring the wellness warrior on, I want to just hand it over to you, Sarge. How are you doing? And uh, yeah, how are things in your neck of the woods? I am great. Yeah, things are things are really good. I've had a productive day. I feel like um, I mean it's I mean the year's running up, but I feel like we're ramping up. Like you know, a lot of we've a lot of time has been misplaced in the last eighteen months, and I feel like now it's just time to you put things behind us and then get moving with yeah. the life that we want to live. Yeah. So yeah, in terms of projects and work and even just refocus on family life, there's a lot there's a lot happening. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm just yeah focusing on my world and, and not letting the external, you know, seep in and affect me. Yeah. So, so far, so good. Yeah, great. Well, I think, um, you know, as we're going through these uh, unprecedented times, you know, the most important thing we, we have to keep in mind is, is our health, you know, our health and wellness. And I think, yeah. Aaron, when you and I, Sarge, when you and I first came together, one of the first things that we were going to tackle was going on a, a fast, you know, going on a, a water fast or a juice fast. Um, and since then, I have been really into keeping my health and wellness up. But it wasn't until I connected with the wonderful wellness warrior, Chris. Oh, I'm <laughs> Chris. Hello. Welcome. welcome. It Hi. wasn't until I, I, I connected with Chris that I, I really got my body in gear. And for the first time, I had my neck cracked and <laughs> I got inside of the, the oxygen chamber. And anyways, we're, we're going to unpack a lot today, but welcome, Chris. Thank you so much for joining us today. It is an honor to be sitting here with you and introducing you to Sarge. <laughs> for the first time. Hi, Sarge. And um, thank you for having me. This is great to be able to talk and disseminate all this information that's inside this real estate here and um, to get it out into the public. So why don't we just start a little bit about your background, Chris, just so we can share with Sarge. Um, how did you get into this profession of chiropractor, chiropractic work? Chiropractic, <laughs> yeah. Um, basically, um, literally by accident. And, and by that, I mean, it was um, due to a car accident that I was um, pulled into chiropractic. Before that, I was studying at university, um, doing chemical engineering in my second year. And... Um, driving a car in a rainy day, ended up um, smashing into a pole. And um, I was 21 then, and I've never heard of chiropractic. And um, as soon as that happened, I started to get neck pain and back pain and tingling between my shoulder blades. I felt like these little like ants almost crawling on my back, that which is basically nerve irritation. Um, when you irritate nerves, you can get pain, you can get tingling, you can get numbness, you can get burning sensation. So I was getting the tingling and then someone said, well, go and see a chiropractor. And I'm like, what's that? And I never heard of a, such a thing. So anyway, I went to see a chiropractor, an osteopath, a physiotherapist. I tried everybody. And I'm like, oh, I like this. I, I think I'm going to be one of those one day because I always wanted to be a doctor. And this was the kind of doctor I wanted to be, not someone that gives people medicine, but can adjust their spine and like Edison once said, um, the doctor of the future will be one that um, teaches people about diet and the importance of the human frame and the integrity of the human frame and um, maintaining a healthy lifestyle. Can't remember the exact quote, but it's somewhere along those lines. And it, it sort of um, attracted me to it. And, and um, what really got me into chiropractic compared to the other two was um, that, that chiropractic had a philosophy which said that you know health comes from upside down inside out so it's it's coming from your nervous system from your brain down to your body and from inside your body out to your musculoskeletal system and that you don't need to put anything into the body or take anything out of it 
it's self-regulating, it's self-regenerating and healing. All you have to do is remove the interference so that this um, God-like force or what we call universal intelligence can communicate with our own innate intelligence through our nervous system to, to, to maximize the um, expression of life and health and balance. So that was all I needed to hear. And I'm like, yes, that's what I want to be. And um, wasted two years of my life doing something I don't like until I, you know, got a kick up the ass um, and um, ended up being in the place I'm in now. I've been doing this for 30 years. Good stuff. I mean, mm. two years isn't isn't uh, that long in a lifetime of, of, of when, when you're aligned to what you want to do. Exactly. And look, I, I say that to everybody who's finishing school. I say, if you don't know what you want to do, don't go to uni and waste a year or two because there's always a 50% dropout in the first year. People don't know what they're doing. They just want to rush into university because they think, oh, I don't want to waste time. I want to get out there. It's like you've got a whole lifetime to figure out to, to work, That's but right. you don't have a lifetime to figure out who you are and your purpose in life. So take a year off, figure it out, take two years off. You'll still be like 20, you know, when you go to university and then you, you'd have two years to figure, you know, to figure out who you are and your purpose and mission in life. Yeah, that's great and, advice. And, you know, Sarge, this is not just a chiropractor. You know, you don't just walk into the clinic and see white and, and bed everywhere. <laughs> It's like an oasis. You know, you go in and you see palm trees everywhere and you get greeted by the wonderful Vicky at the desk. <laughs> and and it's not just him working on your back. He, he, he just sits there and he talks about health and wellness whilst you're there. And then he offers you a pillow. You know, your, your head, you know, your, your, your sleep is so important. So he has pillows and he has magnesium and he has oxygen and he's got, it's not just your body, it's everything that goes around this um, practice that I think what makes you so special is that you've set up this oasis there in Terrigal yeah. and it really is special. I mean, I love going to your clinic and mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So can we talk a little bit about, you know, those extra products because it's not just about cracking your neck or, you know, making sure your body's in alignment. You've got all these other things that are helping people get healthy and well and mm -hmm. you know like like the the oxygen chamber for for instance yeah. one of your little toys that you have mm -hmm. yeah, and that's, oxygen yeah yeah look and that's and that's unique to what i do here at car reflection and cursed oxygen um the um most important thing like you've noticed is is to give people a good experience i i think most people are stressed in life and they want to walk into somewhere and feel instantly at home. So the place smells good. We're always burning essential oils and incense. It, there's music playing in every room. I can't work without music. Actually, if the music stops, I'm like, what's going on? We're, we're <laughs> it's like a wave. I ride it. You know, it's like if without music, I'm just lost. Um, and everything is done so that the patient has a good experience. I don't want people to go, oh, I've got to go and see the chiropractor on my neck, you know, and, and it's always... It's like going to see the dentist. It's always associated with pain. This is, I'm a wellness chiropractor. So my um, ideal client is a healthy client, not a sick one. So I'm trying to promote the concept of walking in feeling good and walking out feeling absolutely great. So we're recalibrating the human body and giving the nervous system the best shot possible to do its job, which is control and coordinate. And then the combination with the oxygen just seems to be uh, a magical formula because oxygen is good for inflammation and pain. Obviously, it's like rocket fuel. The brain needs oxygen. The body needs oxygen. And when you're in the chamber, the amount of oxygen that is infused in your blood. I always think like your cells now are just dancing at the, at, at the rhythm of the oxygen molecules. And um, it, it really raises the energy. And by the time the patient comes out of the oxygen chamber, where they've breathed literally 10 liters of oxygen per minute for a whole hour or an hour and a half sometimes, and they're relaxed. So their stress hormones are down, all the cortisol and adrenaline. Now they're like literally floating. They lie on the table, then they get the massage and the chiro. So they're getting the best of oxygenation, circulation, relaxation, and passive movement so by the time they leave they of course they're going to be feeling wonderful um their pain is gone wow. their is high 
um, and they can't wait to come back again. So I don't have to literally twist their arm to 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 to, to, to you know to get them to come back. They they want to come back. It's like, yeah, I'll come back. When do you want me to come back? You know, like yeah, you know. I guess we're all looking for that feeling where we we go somewhere and we walk out feeling like, wow, I've been transformed, and I didn't have to do anything other than breathe and just lie down and relax. You know, like that's all I had to do. Um, and 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 that's the investment in, in in you know in the body that they um, give to themselves as, as a gift because I always feel like get um, health is a gift and um, we take it for granted and then we lose it and then we go looking for it and we want to pay you know money and whatever but it's it's something that you should look after. I mean, once you've got that gift, it's the gift that keeps on giving and all you have to do is just a little bit of investment of time energy and money and seeing someone like myself or there's plenty of practitioners out there just to keep your body ticking remember it's going to keep ticking for 85 to 90 years so what are you going to do in the last you know the, the well what you do in the first 40 to 50 years will determine what you feel and and your health is going to be like in the next 40 to 50 years so that's you know that's what we do. <laughs> and that's why it's so important for those regular treatments to continue so that people can continue to enhance the level of well-being that they're experiencing. That's that's so cool. I mean, I love that you come in from a holistic point of view and it's almost preventative in a, in a way. You, know, you keep yourself in order, you know, the same way you service your car. This sounds like a an all-round human service, uh, which, yeah. which we all, which I guess most of us, none of us do. But what I what I want to ask you about, and this this might be a prickly question early in the interview, but you know this is, uh, this yeah, is kind of why I'm here. Why why do chiropractors get a bad rap? Like the whole chiropractic industry, uh, in terms of medi the medical industry, just gets pushed out almost like like chiropractic is not necessary because we have mm. you know other other medicines or, or or I mean they're always trying to discredit chiropractors, and I, I haven't really understood why. Um. When you say bad rap, like from the medical uh, um, people, yeah, not yeah. from the average person. Um, yeah. Look, I don't. Chiropractic is based on that philosophy of um, maintaining health and um, and and prevention, and um, not many people go to the doctor when they're healthy. You don't walk to the doctor and go, "Oh, look, you know, I'm just here for the monthly checkup. Um, can I just, yeah. you know, can you?" So. Doctors don't get that whole concept because they're always seeing emergency, um, acute care type patients. So, I mean, chiropractic in chiropractic, the science is there, the philosophy is there, the um, art of adjusting the spine is there. It's been around for over 5,000 years before Christ. You know, Hippocrates, the Chinese, the Japanese, um, probably Jesus Christ himself was a master manipulator because he did a lot of healing by hand. You know, it's like he laid hands on them. We don't know what he did when he laid hands. He probably cracked exactly. their spine. Um, That's right. You know, um, but yeah, they, they don't, they don't get the whole concept of um, why someone needs to go and see a chiropractor. And the other thing is, remember a lot of doctors see the worst cases sometimes when they're in emergency care and, and occasionally there'll be someone who's gone to the hospital with a neck condition like oh, i've been to the chiropractor he cracked my neck and now i can't move it um you know accidents do happen so they're seeing probably one in a thousand cases where something bad would happen but that that's what sticks in their mind they just think oh if you crack someone's neck they're going to have a stroke and die um so all they think about is you know, doctors are trained to think about the worst case scenario and, and they don't get that whole concept of why the body needs regular maintenance and how can you um, maintain a state of optimal health by, you know, a healthy diet, by movement, by lifestyle factors. And obviously that's where chiropractic sits in. So on a, um, like if, if there was a, um, a wellness type of, um, uh what's the word like if there was a spectrum from illness to wellness doctors kind of sit more closer to the illness concept where people go there because they're getting away from illness and, and pain whereas the chiropractic concept is moving towards a state of optimal well-being and and so the two are not 
really compatible? How can you be always giving people treatment for pain and um, discomfort uh, and at the same time preaching prevention and long-term health? It, it, some, it, it somehow doesn't gel together. So you, you can either take this side or that side. So basically, yeah. Yeah. It. yeah. So so just to, just to continue that, I mean, I'm wondering how much yeah. responsibility, to, I mean, it's all responsibility, the individual person to decide to do the maintenance work. Of, yeah. of somebody and, and the, the reason why people end up with in doctors is because they've taken their eyes off the wheel for a bit and they've just you know consumed mm -hmm. the wand and they haven't taken care of themselves yeah yeah look we're not taught um to look after our body you know like i, I reckon by age eight at school you should be able to meditate do yoga learn about nutrition learn about your body learn where your organs yeah. are and um be able to sustain a you know high level of health you know they don't do that at schools and most people have no clue most people don't even know what a what a chiropractor is or does you know um i remember going to a, a marketing um uh, lecture and there was 10 people in there and and each person had to express what they thought a chiropractor was and and did and, and it was amazing that every person had a different point of view of what what we do and what who we are so there's a lot of misinformation out there um but yeah we're, we're not taught that our health is important and we need to invest in it and people think they're healthy because they they're not sick and that's not true and they think they're sick because they have symptoms and that's not true most of the time there's a, a long incubation period between when a problem starts and when disease or illness starts to show up in the in the human body so that's the time to be putting in the effort and the time the energy and the money to um maintain health and to to increase that because remember we're aging so if if the balance is starting to tip against you you need to counterbalance it with something on the other side and most people don't have a clue what to do other than take a pill so i've got a headache i'll take a panadol i've got this i'll take that you know there's they know what to do when it comes to medications but they don't know what to do when it comes to folklore remedies um I, I mentioned recently to someone about food being medicine and she said, oh, well, good luck to you. You know, you think food is medicine, like oh, no. as if that was a new concept. I'm like, well, that was the original medicine. People had food and herbs and vitamins. Um, so food is medicine, but most people don't see that. They think medicine is drugs. They see medicine as some sort of a chemical they ingest or take into their body. Um, so there's a lot of, yeah. Lack of education, basically, which is what I try to do with my um, clinic here. 80% of what I do, people say, what do you do? Are you a chiropractor? you crack backs? I say, no. I'm an educator that teaches people how to take responsibility for their back and for their health. Mm -hmm. And that way I'm empowering them. You mm -hmm. know, like you give a man a fish, you feed him for a day. If you mm -hmm. teach him how to fish, you feed him for a lifetime. Mm -hmm. So this is what I do, basically, is... Um, you know, teach people, empower them, give them information to be able to sustain their health long term. Hmm. Giving people information. Uh, that's a very good segment. Now, Sarge, I'm going to ask you continue to ask some questions because you can ask this wellness warrior pretty much anything and he'll have an answer for you. Yeah. I have personally heard recommendations. I've read recommendations and every single time i am with chris i can ask him anything and he has the answer for my question so i'm mm -hmm. going to pose a question to you now chris what do you think is the three main components to having a healthy lifestyle well the number one is movement <laughs> we all need to move um, keeping the body mobile, the body was designed for three-dimensional movement. So a, a body that doesn't move becomes stagnant and a stagnant body becomes sick, basically. Um, of course, the second thing is breathing, oxygen. This is where the hyperbaric chamber or just breathing fresh air is going to the beach sometimes. It's a good thing because you've got, uh, you know, oxygen, you've got negative ions, you've got colloidal minerals floating. So you're, you're getting breath and you're breathing properly. And... Um, the third aspect would be um, what we ingest, um, what we put in our body, chemically speaking. So it's a, 
it's a combination of um, mental stimulation, chemical stimulation, and mechanical stimulation that keeps the human body alive. They're, they're the main three pillars. And as I always say to my clients, you know, when if you stop moving, your body's dying, basically. And when you don't move at all, you're dead. So, you know, do you get it? Like, it's, it's pretty obvious that movement is one of the major keys. Actually, move when your spine is moving, that's how the cerebrospinal fluid circulates to your brain and that it, it provides oxygen and nutrients. So without movement, it's, it's, you're telling your body you're, you're slowly dying. And, and, you know, that's, um, they, they're the main three pillars. It's um, a little ironic that in this last two years or so, they have us inside and wearing a mask. Both components are essential for health. <laughs> So yeah, yeah. it's uh, it's just ironic that um, you know we're in this situation, but I I encourage people to you know to continue to get out there and walk and get your oxygen and, and these are the pillars of a health a healthy lifestyle. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, so. Yeah, without without health, without you know, without that, I mean, look, locking people in in their homes um, and and putting masks and. And the other day I bought a um, oxygen meter and as soon as I put a mask on and put it underneath, it started beeping because when we breathe, we're breathing 21% oxygen. The, the air has 21% oxygen, 79% nitrogen. So as soon as you put a mask on, now you're breathing more carbon dioxide, less oxygen. As soon as the oxygen drops, the oxygen meter started beeping saying, you're in danger. You are going through hypoxia, which is low oxygenation which starts to build up toxins in your body and that causes inflammation and pain. And it's interesting that my business has really <laughs> thrived during COVID because people having more pain, especially neck pain, because they're not getting enough oxygen and their body goes into a stress response, fight, flight, shrug your shoulders, we're ready to fight. It doesn't differentiate between a mask and a tiger chasing you, basically. It's, it's just a stress response. Um, so it releases cortisol and all of a sudden getting headaches, neck pain, tension, headaches, migraines, lower back pain, all the areas where the stress response hits. The fight is in the neck. The flight is in the lower back because that's where we want to run. What was your first response when you heard that they were forcing people to put masks on? What, 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 what were you thinking? <laughs> uh, look... <laughs> It it's going against what you you offer you know oxygen it, is one of your main products <laughs> yeah look it annoyed me to no end and i still get clients that come in wearing a mask and they lie on the table while they're wearing a mask as if that's protecting them from anything and um obviously the research i did was that the mask is porous and a virus is so tiny it can go straight through it and straight out of it so if, if it provided a placebo effect, and they say placebo can give you 60 to 80%, you know, um, results, if you believe in something that strong, it may actually help. But yeah, for me, I could never do it. And um, I, I've never worn a mask since the beginning of this pandemic. Um, and, um, and that's, you know, and that, you know, and, that, that's and my system. I have to say, Chris, you have been standing in your power and, you know, you have had a few run-ins and you've shown yeah. a lot of people about how to stand in truth. And and so not only are you a wellness uh, practitioner, but you are a warrior here in the true sense of, you know, yeah, making yeah. sure that people are healthy and well and standing in that truth and power that you have. Yeah, well, this is where at the end of the day, you, you know, you make a difference. You, if you believe in something, you you know that that becomes part of your value system and for me health is my number one priority you know i spend a lot of time and energy on my health and i'm not going to negate that by putting on a mask or, or doing a, a medical procedure that i don't agree on um so if i'm going to do that then you know it's it's almost like i'm lying to my body and and, and i like to walk my talk so i'm not going to do something that i don't believe in it's as simple as that yeah i mean it is it is as simple as that i think i think a lot yeah. of people forget that and i i mean we look around and like, people aren't making the choice to look after themselves let alone understand who they are so they can make a, a choice because they a lot of people believe the choice isn't even there um yeah. 
that that's the hard i think that's a hard part to get over is once you realize that we are in control and that we can choose to live you know not to the the average but we can probably live a lot longer if we if we look after mm-hmm. ourselves I, rem- I remember years ago i decided no that's it i'm, I'm only going to drink water i'm only look look after myself i i was doing yoga almost every day and for movement and breathing like i i yeah. just I found that to be, I mean, it wasn't just the, the the amazing experience. It was the fact that I could talk to my body after that. I could feel there was a niggling right there and I could just, yeah. I, I didn't have to go and see somebody to say, okay, that's where the problem is. And and I need to, I, I was aware of it. So I wasn't damaging myself, but mm. I mean, even, even with all the exercise I would do in the gym, understanding, I mean, hearing what you're saying is just music to my ears because I, I can know and I feel it and I've lived it. Mm. But that's, that's because I was dragged along to, to dance or to the gym or to to yoga but for people that don't do all those activities they they wouldn't have that personal relationship with their body yeah um, yeah that's right yeah so most how people, yeah most people okay. don't have a personal relationship with their body they don't even know where their stomach is if they point to your stomach they'll point probably to their liver um they have yeah they just have no idea they they just think as i said they think health is the absence of disease and yet health is a state it's a state of balance it's a state of um unconditional balance between your physical mental emotional spiritual energetic your chemical being it's 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 something that you need to work on you don't have to be a health nut and i'm not a health nut and none of us are training for the next olympics but you do there are rules there are certain things that you need to do to maintain that that level of health and um obviously you know um, there, there is a, an element of time that that is required, even if it's 10, 15 minutes every day. Um, yeah. You know, it's not by chance that you are healthy and fit. It has to be a choice. And that choice has to be made through some sort of informed, inf- it's an informed choice. And that's one of the things actually in medicine is that you have to have informed consent and you do no harm. So they're the only two things you have to follow in get informed and do things for your body that will not do any harm. And if you do something that harms you, do two things that are actually going to promote health. Smash it with two more things. You know, that's that's the, you know, like I always say to people, if you work hard during the day, well, just reward yourself at the end of the day. Have a warm bath with magnesium salts and um, do some stretches. Counterbalance the stress of every day with, with something that's going to promote more of, of, of what you want rather than just leave it to chance and then one day, you you know, you, you're having a heart attack. And that's a classic example that I often tell people, what's the ser- first symptom of a heart attack? And they go, what? I go, it's a heart attack. And you've got a <laughs> of making it. Like, why would you leave yourself open, you know, yeah. instead of maintaining good health? You're right. It's always such a surprise. And mm. I mean, you, you don't expect to have a heart attack today. And, and even if you were unhealthy and, and didn't look after yourself for decades, you still wouldn't expect to have a heart attack. It just kind of jumps on you, but you would know otherwise. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, if you're in tune with your body, you would know when you're going to have a heart attack. Everything is, um, everything happens for a reason in the universe, as you know. And um, if you are in tune, you'd you'd know what's going on with your heart. You'd know what's going on with your digestive system. I mean, most people don't because they're a little bit numb and um, disconnected. You know, yeah. their body is just an attachment to their head. They think their body's just there to carry their head around. That's it. That's that's the usefulness well, of their body. <laughs> you know? we, don't, we don't think about it, do we? No, no, that's right. It's just a nuisance. It breaks down and people go, and I'm getting old and these are normal aches and pains and I'll just go to the doctor and these are normal things that I have to take. I'm 60, I need to take these pills and I'm 70, I need to take this and that. And and by the time they're in there, you know, like I've got clients who work in chemists and they, they pack those medications to the nursing homes. And on average, each um, person in a nursing home is on about between eight to 10 different medications. Like, you don't get to that overnight. Obviously, you start with one thing. Let's say you're a little bit obese, and now you've got cholesterol, then it's blood pressure, then it's diabetes, then it's the kidneys failing, then it's that failing, and all the side effects of all these drugs start to interact. And before you know it, you're on 10 different pills. And, you know, you've got these little yeah. containers with Monday, Tuesday, <laughs> popping <laughs> pills. Yeah. And they think yeah. they think this is life. They think this is, this is how it's it is now you know it's like they're dependent on this thing and 
Unfortunately for them, it's all subsidized by Medicare, so they don't have to pay for it. But if they had to pay, you know, a thousand dollars for every medication they take, people will start paying more attention to their health. But it's not Good about point. health; it's about you know <laughs> selling yeah. medications, and it's about keeping the economy of that industry going, yeah. basically. Um, that that's a that's a big penny when it drops. I think I, sooner or later everyone realizes that is that's what's happening. And you're right; we don't directly pay for it, but I mean our yeah. governments are hemorrhaging. And you you look yeah. at you look at just the cost of doing one of these tests to make sure whether you know whether you can interact in society or not. Um, I mean, we're talking. I mean, I know know they're now fifty bucks at at the chemist, but I mean the government's been spending so much money on on all these oh. pharmaceutical just stuff i mean i don't i don't have the the medical um knowledge really and this is yeah. and this and you said that earlier like we should know by we say eight years old or, or eighth grade yeah, I, reckon, I reckon by eight you know you can learn all that stuff instead of yeah. um learning a lot of useless things about you know other other stuff i'm not saying learning to read and write and all that is not important but i think learning to know who you are as a person and how to look after your to this amazing instrument like you know if you were to put a value on it i don't know what you'd put a value i think it's billions of dollars i mean you know if, if somebody that owns a nice car will look after it and yet they'll trash their body <laughs> yeah. um, that's right they, you know and and then they go you know running to the doctor when something goes wrong and all of a sudden we've got a, a big fear campaign surrounding oh i'm sick and i don't know what's happening and 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 you know doctors don't get it right all the time that's a lot there's a lot of um uh medical um misdiagnosis you know a lot of people die because the body's complex and you know you can't always get it right mm -hmm. so yeah. the best thing to do is yeah start early look after your body um maintain it um understand how it works as i said you don't have to be a health nut it's just basic mm -hmm. stuff the information is out there um put some money aside invest it in your health every year whether you go to a health retreat or have a massage or have a chiropractic treatment uh, have mm -hmm. an oxygen therapy have a float mm -hmm. in a float tank wow yeah some people live and die That's and they've never, they've never had a massage like some people mm -hmm. go oh, oh, had a massage. i'm like what they didn't live at all did they no no Chris, um, you said put some money aside and, and, you know, concentrate on your health and wellness. Can I ask you, what kind of supplements do you recommend? Or are there anything that you do, do you add to your diet? Or, you know, are there any, besides going into the oxygen chamber and getting massages and anything, but yeah. what, what other things do you include in your diet to help keep you healthy and well? Yeah, look, I take all the antioxidants and particularly now that um, we're, you know, everyone's worried about COVID and I'm always dealing with clients who um, have had, you know, the vaccine and, um, and um, you know, I need to maintain a high level of health because I, I feel like as a practitioner, if my energy is high, I pull them up to, to that frequency. Whereas if I start my day and I'm depleted and low on energy they, they're going to drag me down with them and then i'm exhausted by the end of the day so things like vitamin c quercetin zinc um, cod liver oil um, or any of the oils like mct oil um, uh, nac which is glutathione um, what else do i take I, you know I've, I've got a lot of different things for different times like if i feel I'm coming down with something, I'll take um, uh, olive leaf extract and echinacea type herbs, um, uh, more vitamin C, more, um, you know, all those antioxidants that are tried and tested and um, we, you know, we need them. We need them in our, in our daily um, lifestyle. And yep, my body's probably not going to utilize it all. And um, as they say, you're going to have expensive urine at the end of the day, but I'd rather have expensive urine than be deficient and sick because, and that's where, and you know, people say health is, can, you know, you, you've got to spend money or invest, but really when you're sick, that costs you more money. Time off yeah. work, uh, early retirement. I, I mean, I know people who've retired at age 50 because they've abused their body and they're on a pension basically and a disability pension imagine how much money they could have earned if they continued to work um uh, 
you know, the happiness factor. If you're not healthy, you're not going to be happy. You can't do too much. You, you know, it, it, it does limit you. And that's the real cost of not looking after your health. It's not what you pay yeah. to have a chiropractic or a massage or a supplement or whatever. It's the fact that you're not actually engaging in life at the, at the highest level of um, expression of who you are and what you're here to accomplish. Yeah. Uh, basically, that's it. Um, yeah. it it's, it's just a declaration to the universe that you exist and that you are important and that you're here to do something. And that's it. Yeah. Now, that's what that, health that's... is about. It's about wholeness. Actually, the word health, I think it's Greek or Latin for the word, for the meaning to be whole. And to be whole is to, to, to incorporate all those things I mentioned before, your physical elements, your mental, emotional, chemical. It's, it's the holistic approach to engaging with 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 the universe at all levels and knowing that it's okay to even you know death at the end of it is, is going to be okay because you've lived a full life and you've got no fears it's that's that you know um, and you live and die with a big smile on your face and have a party at the end that's that's my my thing about death is like i'm just going to invite all my <laughs> friends and say, okay tomorrow i'm checking out so let's let's have <laughs> yeah, all right. and um, pop a champagne walk and have and drink some champagne and, and and have fun because it's just another way of transcending this reality to a new dimension it's it's nothing to be feared but at least i've lived a full life and haven't missed out on anything great i mean that, that's the best way to play i think but it's you're in the minority because I, yeah I, I, those i mean I, I i don't i don't know anyone that thinks like that actually like no, I, no. I, I mean, I met a few handful of people, but only because we've had this conversation already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd say there's probably about five percent of people out there that that think like that and um, will spend a lot of um, their, you know, their energy on their health. Um, the others, look, a lot of people are spending money on the external factors like you know the botox injections and makeup and looking good on the outside basically and there's nothing wrong with that but i think internal hygiene is where it's at when you're healthy on the inside it reflects on the outside you can't change the inside from the outside but you can change the outside from the inside and that's where that that philosophy of chiropractic health comes from upside down inside out not the other way around. You don't put anything in. You don't take anything out. You're just facilitating the body's natural ability to heal itself as its own expression of evolution and um, and an expression of health and balance and harmony with with nature. You know, we're we're Earthlings, so we're just an expression expression of planet Earth. And when we're healthy, the planet is healthy. And when we're not, the planet isn't. We're just yeah the way the planet communicates <laughs> it's it's needs through us we're, we're, we're just an extension of it um and and we know that we haven't been treating the planet that well mm. and we haven't been treating treating our bodies that well i mean you know if you That's smoke right. a pack of cigarettes a day you're not going to be very healthy um and i don't have judgment about that but that's the way it is you know <laughs> mm. and, and uh, chris you are a, a walking example of of you know you're in your youth right now you're you 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 look like you're 21 <laughs> you know oh, you, you look so young right now but you know it's it's your your body your skin everything about yeah. you looks very very um fit and and i'm you're probably gonna live till you know 150 <laughs> at the rate that you're going <laughs> <laughs> yeah i hope so i'm, I'm aiming for 120 yeah, um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so. i'm just gonna pull up some comments here we've had really some great comments in the audience here. Um, Nicole says you're an incredible, amazing wellness man. Um, I think uh, Kathleen said this is so poignant, personal, beyond words. I mean, Chris, oh, this, is, this is what I mean. This is what you do to me. Every time I walk into your clinic, I, I just walk out feeling comforted and comforted is not right the right word. I just feel excited that somebody knows mm. how to take care of themselves. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, and, and yeah, yeah. And look, all we're doing is like I find, you know, you asked me before what's the three pillars of the things that you can do for your health. But in 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 the body, I always think of the three systems. It's like three legs of a tripod. And if you take one, the tripod is a little bit wobbly. And those three systems are your nervous system, because that's the control system and it's 
control uh, controls things through electricity, through electrical current. Mm -hmm. You've got your immune system and you've got your gut microbiome. So once these three elements are working really well and they affect each other, they're like brothers and sisters. They're working towards uh, maintaining your health. So once your body's in balance with your nervous system, your immune system, your gut microbiome, I think that has a ripple effect that extends to all the other system. Your cardiovascular system, your musculoskeletal system, of course, benefits, your um, uh, urinary system, your respiratory system. Every system is going to have a, a, a positive effect when those three systems are in harmony. And that's the mm -hmm. key word. There has to be harmony and balance between those three systems for everything else to coexist in a symbiotic relationship. And... Um, and, and, you know, that's the, literally the definition of happiness because you are coherent. There's coherence going on. Everything's working together. Um, and, and then, you know, you can see this big auric field. It's like this torus is just going round and round and you're just expressing that health and people feel it. And, and by the way, with the oxygen chamber, that's another thing that um, happens is it, it increases the production of stem cells. Everybody now is talking stem cells and anti-aging and, getting rid of cancer and getting rid of um, people that with, with, you know, nerve damage, etc. So in the hyperbaric chamber, the oxygen somehow stimulates the production of more of those stem cells, which are like blank DNA cells that are mm. able to do whatever you want them to do. If your brain is damaged, they'll repair the brain. They become a brain cell. If the liver is damaged, they become a liver cell. Um, the other thing that the oxygen does is it extends the um, telomere. So every DNA has a tail. It's called the telomere. And the longer the telomere, the healthier you are. So it's anti-aging, it's detoxing, it's alkalizing, and it, it pretty much ticks all the boxes. So when I do the combo, the, the, the chiro with the oxygen, you know, it's it's like the ultimate treatment. And um, uh, obviously it is something unique to what I do at the clinic. And um, I hope more and more people incorporate it because we need those sort of things. People are looking for it. And um, the fact that my business has tripled in the last 12 months is, is an indication that awesome. people yeah. are actually starting to pay attention to their health, uh, yeah. whether, uh, you know, um, yeah. Yeah, well, so well, something... again, I'm, I'm, before I throw it over to you, Aaron, I'm, yeah. I just, we've had so many compliments of, of thank you for bringing me this knowledge. Thank you for raising this. I mean, this is, we need more of you talking loudly. And yeah. another thing that you do is yeah. you, you create videos, you're on Instagram, you, you know, you, you create information for people. So you're also an influencer who has stepped in front mm -hmm. of the camera. And so all the people that are in the audience right now, who's really soaking up Chris, I suggest I'll tag his, I, I've tagged his name on this live, but listen to what he says, watch his content, read his, his information, because it is, it is yeah. point between it for right now. And um, we all need this reminder every day. Yeah, exactly. Chris, did you just say that the, the Ptolemies, they, they stopped, uh, was, I, know, I know as we get older, they get, they get shorter and shorter. And then all of a sudden the cells communication breaks down in terms of us getting older. Cause I mean, that, that's a real pandemic old age, right? <laughs> yeah. How do we, and we all want to stop that. So how, I mean, is there a way of reversing that or can we grow more? Because, I mean, my next question was going to be, and maybe this can lead into it, is what's happening in your space that's just amazing you, that things that maybe innately you knew for a while, but now the science, well, the science is starting mm -hmm. to join, you know, what what was going to be natural in the, in the new earth world compared to where we are now. Mm, well, what is what is happening basically is that um, people are recognizing that, um, well, firstly, in terms of aging, we can't stop it, but we can slow it down. And stress is a major, major factor. Everybody has yeah. stress in their life in one form or another. Um, we're not um, in, in harmony within ourselves and with nature. So it's sometimes just nice to stop and give your body a treatment, um, whether it's oxygen, whether it's chiropractic, whether it's uh, whatever it is, just sometimes even lying on the beach or having a holiday. Sometimes a holiday is therapeutic, just to unplug and go away somewhere from the daily grind, you know, just doing something different. So what people um, are starting to realize that is that one, stress is the number one killer and it's contributing to every other thing. You know, we, we're not designed to live 
in fight flight all the time in adrenaline yeah. in, in in cortisol you know high levels and our body is a chemical factory that's capable of producing um, things like dopamine serotonin endorphins oxytocin um, and all those you know chemicals that 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 help you know help maintain health and all we have to do is really relax um, and and just chill for a change and stop trying to find things to distract ourselves with and um, and it, and it's easy to do that these days with digital technology there's always something that blips or beeps or rings or you know so we just need to stop and yeah. the key word is just relax um, which can be annoying for a lot of people, especially stressed out people, you say relax, and it's like, what do you mean relax? I'm relaxed. Why can't you see I'm relaxed? I'm relaxed. Now, you know, like, what? I'm one of them. <laughs> Where's my phone? It hasn't been for a while. What, what, yeah. What's going on? You know, Something's gone wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's just getting getting people to get into that space where they just breathe and 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 let go for a little while. And it's it's just reminding them that's the natural state they have to be in at least 80% of the time. It's not the other way around where they're stressed 80% and, you know, occasionally they'll feel relaxed, they have a drink and they kind of, you know, feel good about themselves that, no, it's the other way around. 80% of the time, maybe more, you should be feeling good. You should be high on all those chemicals, the endorphins, the serotonin, the oxytocin, the dopamine, you know, your body's a chemical factory. It's, it's there. If you were to buy these from the chemist, it'll cost thousands of dollars. And yet you can produce them with a simple hack like a gratitude hack where you put your hand on your heart and you say thank you you know and, and just find things to be thankful about and all of a sudden your body starts to release all these hormones because you're in gratitude you you know you're feeling loving you're feeling happy you're feeling um a sense of well-being um and 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 the more you do it the more you're programming your body to release more and more of those hormones as compared to yeah. the bad ones so there's no there's no secret it's just it's all there in plain sight it's just that people have to start to do it and to do it sometimes they need a like a coach and this is where i come in i'm like a little bit of a health coach that holds their hands and it's like i'm the third wheel on the t on the, on the bike that's just teaching them how to ride the bike eventually they'll do it on their own um and you know a lot of my clients have been coming to see me for 20, 30 years, and that's not because I'm a bad therapist and I can't fix them. It takes 30 years to fix them. It's because they, they're getting for the, you know, it's it's like this is the booster, you know, the good booster yeah. it, it, that they need to continue on. And if they do have a little slump in their health, it, it, they bounce off much quicker than people who have neglected their health for years and years and years. And... Um, and then they come to a point where it's like, oh, my God, I've got cancer or I'm, I'm having a heart attack or I'm going to I'm a stroke, you know, um, candidate. And then there's too much work to be done and they don't have the discipline for it. So they fall for the trap of take the medications because you're not going to change your lifestyle now. It's mm -hmm. too late. You, you haven't got the discipline. You don't know what to do. So the fear element takes over and they just follow the instruction of mm -hmm. the physician. Mm -hmm. which ends up, you know, they end up still living, but then, you know, not the best life to the highest potential that they can live to. It's, it's reduces their potential, but we can justify anything. The ego can justify anything, you know, mm -hmm. like, Absolutely. well, I'm 60 and this is what 60 year olds do. You know, yeah. like that's, that's how you justify it. It's like, these are normal aches and pains that I should be getting because I'm 60 and, you know, I'm almost 60 myself now, and um, I don't Chris, have any <laughs> that's what I mean. Like, you, yeah. you look like you're 20. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you look I very mean, in order. Yeah. Like, you could yeah. just, like, you're about to, you know, you could head out and run a couple of Ks, not even a problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. I'm not, I mean, I'm not a runner, but, you know, I'm, I'm doing all the right things. I'm not perfect. I, um, you know have times where um, I don't do the right thing, but I know how to compensate for it and, and, you know, balance it out. It's always finding that counterbalance, just like a trapeze artist who's walking on a, you know, a tight rope. 
it's it's they never walk straight. It's always left, right, left, right, left, right. You know, sort of trying to find the balance, the counterbalance, the balance, the counterbalance, and then they stay in the middle. But if you lean too much to one side, you're going to fall. So a lot of people are leaning way too much to the sickness and imbalance in their body that eventually they fall into that trap, and then they, you know, they don't know what to do from there. And of course when you're in a fear mode, your IQ is not as high as someone who's relaxed and com confident and comfortable in their own skin. Um, and so they, you know, they end up taking whatever the medications they're supposed to take, because if you don't take your blood pressure medications, you'll get a stroke. But what about reducing your stress first and see if your blood pressure drops? Obviously, yeah, that takes time. Yeah. So, and they don't want to do that. It's a hard message to to hammer home that stress is everywhere and that it doesn't need to be, you know, the the eighty percent of your life. And yeah. back back in the day I used to do some security work at a few bars in Sydney. Mm. And it was I mean, there was always people that had to, and it was just when a lot of smoking rules came in that you couldn't I mean, not that you couldn't smoke inside, but you couldn't even smoke in the door, you had to go to the other side of the road. And yeah. so I'm letting the same people in and out of the bar so they can go have their smoke. And one of the trends that I noticed was, I mean, and it made me think, you know, smoking, like if someone smokes occasionally, it probably won't affect their health too much. I don't know if that's true or not. But what I noticed was the people that were coming out smoking, it wasn't just one or two smokes over the And they felt to feel their presence of just, it's been a rough day. Everyone's on the whole world's on my back. I'm stressed yeah. out. So just, you know, just, Get out of my way i'm going for a smoke and i was like whoa you know if you, if you really need it that bad you know go nuts but it was the stress that every single yeah. person had that that was smoking i mean there wasn't a happy smoking person that that's that was the thing that just was like you know what it's it's not the smoking that's killing them it's the stress and the, and the, and the wow. reason why they're smoking is because they're stressed yeah. and i just thought wow that's not good. And you know what? It, and the funny thing about smoking is the, the act of smoking itself is, is you know, you, so you're stressed. You go for a smoke. Oh, I'm stressed. I need a smoke. And what are you doing when you smoke? You take, you know, deep breaths. So why don't you just take a few deep breaths without without the um, nicotine? Because that's all the cigarette is doing, making you sm breathe deeper so you feel more relaxed, yeah. right? And that's the first thing you do when you meditate. You take four or ten deep breaths and then you start to relax. So they, they think the cigarette is relaxing them, but that's causing an addiction, which causes more stress, which means they have to, you know, keep doing it more and more until it it's it's basically a chemical toxin in their body that um, is going to affect them um, in one way or another. But if they just held something like a pen and just went... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was thinking the exact same thing. Yeah. Here it is. Like, Here it is, my um, my healing something. Well, we yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, or someone someone should just in, invent an oxygen pen or something, like a little <laughs> a couple of puffs of oxygen, and they just go, oh, great, I'm feeling good now. I don't need to do anything. Uh, yeah. And and then just just do some movement, you know. Like I, I I try to keep it simple with people. I say, if you're sitting in front of the computer, get up and move. Give yourself five uh, five minutes every hour, so that um, your body do, the body does not like to stagnate to to be still in one position, and it doesn't like repetitive movement. So just every hour, get up for five minutes, yawn if you want to stretch, um, hang off something just to give your spine a bit of a stretch, like be a monkey for a couple of minutes, um, drink a glass of water, take ten deep breaths, do something different always vary the activity the body loves variety that's another key thing movement and variety is the body's you know number one and number two thing so combine the two together a variety of three-dimensional movement continues to keep the body healthy and keeps you sane as well because without without movement you're not getting much oxygen to your brain that uses up this is like the engine it uses up 20 percent of the oxygen you breathe it's a small organ but uses up 20 percent so if your brain is not getting oxygen you're getting brain fog you're getting tired you're getting fatigued and that's again stress response you're going to stress your brain's going i don't know what's going on someone's suffocating me um, we haven't moved in a while stress response cortisol inflammation um, 90 percent of all diseases are caused by chronic inflammation in the body and acidity so by Taking a few deep breaths, you reduce the inflammation, you, you reduce the pain, and you produce more of those good hormones that we talked about before.
Yeah. Yeah. Well, oh, wow. Well, Sarge, I'm going to throw it over to you. I'm I, Again, I just wanted to, I didn't know if you got to read this before, Chris, but there's a lot of people who are really grateful for this information. It's almost like a top reminder that. of how important health and wellness is, yes. you know, yeah. every single day. And you make it fun. You really do. You make, you make being healthy and well exciting. <laughs> and um, I'm personally grateful to, to have met you and you're in my life now. And um, but now, Sarge, I just wanted to throw it over to you and see before we wrap this up, what are, what are your thoughts? What do you think? <laughs> well, so, uh, I mean, it shouldn't be a surprise by now, but, you know, this is a secret source and I'm supposed to identify what your secret source is. And and I think what I, what I captured is from when you're in your early 20s and when you decided to do that shift in careers, um, you, you had, you had the knowledge, you, you recognized you know, I'm going to serve, I'm going to serve humanity in, in the knowledge that I, I mean, it had to be innate. Otherwise, I mean, how do you make it a, such a, a distinct course change like that, but to yeah. decide, you know, holistic health, people looking after themselves and, and sharing that information like that, that's the, that's a secret source of knowledge. And you had it back then and you've, yeah. you've spent that, your whole career um, sharing that information with people. So that's, that's quite a power. That's it. That's it. And and when I was, I don't know if I said that before, but when I was young, you know, people say, what are you going to be when you grow up? You know, like, I always say I want to be a doctor. I don't know why I said that when I was yeah. a little boy. Um, but then when I, um, we migrated to Australia when I was 16 and I don't know, I guess I got lost in the system. I didn't know what I wanted to do. I got enough marks to get into engineering. I thought, yeah, I'm good at chemistry. I'll do chemical engineering. Um, back in those days, I used to do a lot of bodybuilding and I thought I was going to be Mr. Universe and all that kind of stuff, <laughs> you know. So yeah. I was always interested in health and nutrition. Um, and, of course, the car accident, which, by the way, I ended up smashing into an electricity pole and I was driving one of those Chrysler chargers, which was built like a tank, like a solid metal. And I went smack, bang, head on with an electricity pole, which I bent in half because, you know, like luckily it didn't fall on top of me. Um, the effect of that whiplash obviously was so severe. And at the time I used to work at KFC as a you know university student. And that was hard bloody work, you know, lifting up all these crates of chicken in and out of the cool room and breaking the chicken and cooking the chicken and cleaning the, the oil of the... By the end of the shift, my back was so bad. And between the accident and the chicken, <laughs> I, was, I was cactus. And, um, and, and, and so, but that was the universe's way of making fate bring me back to my destiny, which is to become a holistic doctor, or I don't even call myself a doctor, a, a wellness warrior, yeah. um, which is a, um, I see myself more as a teacher and a facilitator of health than someone who sits there and, takes notes and diagnoses and does, you know, an analysis of people. And it's like, I just need to touch people and, and, and let my fingers do the walking. And if they feel good and their body's happy with the treatment, then they're going to, the, things are going to change. Um, so uh, I'm, I'm not that kind of doctor that sits there with a white coat and a stethoscope and, you know, a tie and, you know, I'm pretty casual. All my friends, are, uh, all my patients are my mates and we, we, we're part of a team. And, and, you know, the team's job is to get them across the line, educate them, empower them, and make them feel good about their body mm -hmm. so that they can invest more in, in it and keep coming back for that experience. Um, and usually yeah. I just say come once a month to, 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 you know, to, to maintain your health. And it seems to be a, a winning formula. I've been doing it for 30 years. So um, it seems to be working. Like you could have it. easily gone the other way and, and been working for a pharmaceutical company with yeah. with a with a degree in chemical engineering. <laughs> chemical engineering, oh. yeah, yeah. Or, or worse, you could have been working at KFC for the rest of your life. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah. Look, well, either way, as as you know, things happen for a reason, and yeah. Um, yeah. that car accident. Um, I didn't make it to my friend's 21st. I, that's where I was going, a tw 21st birthday. And I was all fancy dressed for it too. So here I am in Manly Hospital getting stitched, you know, four stitches where the, the head hits the steering wheel. 
that was the end of that night. But it brought me to where I am now, and it's obviously yeah. something I love. I embrace, um, you know, as they say, do what you love and love what you do, and that's what I do. Yeah. Well, it definitely shows, Chris. Yeah. And um, again, from the bottom of my heart, thank you for not only helping me, but helping humanity, uh, not only yeah. with health and wellness, but with this whole situation that we're finding ourselves in, because you are a true warrior and yeah, you're holding the fort down for a lot of people. And I recognize that. So yeah, thank you. as we close this interview, can we just have some last final thoughts from you, Chris, and maybe contact information, where can people uh, reach you not only oh, yeah. offline, but online too. Cause like I said, you are, you know, teaching people through video and so go away. Yeah, yeah. Well, we've got the YouTube channel now, um, and the car reflection, the, the name of the clinic is car reflection and coast oxygen. Um, I've got a Facebook page for either of them. I'm always actively posting articles and information snippets of information, um, just to keep those, uh, sites alive. I, uh, my website is um, carreflection.com.au. Um, I'm in Terrigal on the Central Coast. Mm -hmm. If anyone wants to come in and um, have a treatment and see how different the way I work to a lot of other chiropractors and therapists out there. Um, so yeah, feel welcome to give me a call. Uh, we, if we can include my number, 0411-963-965, maybe somewhere we can just write that down for people if they want to yeah. give me a call on my mobile phone. Um, I see a, a, a small number of patients. I'm, I'm sort of really focused on health conscious people in a health conscious community that want to benefit from this sort of treatment. I'm not into the one-off flash in the pan, you know, fix me doctor, I'm here for, you know, one or two sessions, um, uh, you know, fix my back. I'm not a fixer. I, I, I like to think that I'm, a, you know, I facilitate people's healing. Their body does the healing. All I'm doing is removing the interference. So come in, check it out. Try the hyperbaric chamber. It's really an amazing experience. Mm -hmm. Um, and um, everyone that comes out of there is either giggling or on a high of some sort. And I could never understand why, because it's not laughing gas and it's, it's, it's nothing in there other than oxygen. But that just goes to show you that maybe oxygen does lift those chemicals we talked about, the dosi, uh, dopamine, oxytocin, um, serotonin and um, endorphins. So people feel on a high because they're, they're feeling healthy again something that they may have not experienced in a long, long time. So. And on that note, whenever you crack my neck, I'm also laughing out loud too, because yeah. it, 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 I don't know why I laugh, but you, you crack my neck and I just, the automatic <laughs> response is just laugh. That's <laughs> it's right. a fun experience. And, and Sheena was one of those people, Sarge, that's never been to a chiropractor. So that was her first experience, which is good for you because you know, it was a pleasant one. And you swore first and then you did laugh at the end. It was, it was a I bit say, of a shock. I think uh, I used Jesus's name too. Didn't I say yeah, something yeah, yeah. about Jesus? <laughs> well, it's, it's confronting just, having hands on your neck. That's right. That's right. And most people don't understand that the crack is just the release of energy. It's the conversion of the liquid in the joint into gas. It's, it's like when you po pull a cork off a champagne bottle, you're changing the atmospheric pressure inside the bottle and then the gas bubbles out. And if you shake the bottle too much, it's going to spill everywhere. The joint is the same thing. It's, it's just a, a vacuum sealed capsule with fluid that lubricates and nourishes it. So as you stretch it, 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 it converts the fluid into gas and it makes a popping sound. And that's a healthy thing for a, a joint to do because then that stimulates the release of more of that fluid, which lubricates and nourishes it and realigns the spine and gets the movement happening. So the nervous system is communicating with the body. Our innate intelligence is again in sync with all those other systems. It's like the, the brain is the, the maestro that's running the orchestra and it needs to have full control of the orchestra to run it. And the spine is like the switchboard that allows that control to happen. And if anything's out of alignment, the switchboard is not working. The brain can't communicate. Mm -hmm. And it's almost like 7 billion communications per second are taking place in the body um, to allow it to, to survive, to live, to grow, to reproduce, and to do whatever it needs to do. And, and we, we don't contribute to that in any way other than just to, to do our thing. Like we don't think about all these functions, right? If we did, 
trying to control right. 100 trillion cells um, with our mind, with our thoughts, we will fail every time. We won't be able to do it. There's too many moving parts. Well, 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 you guys, another episode of Freedom Collective's Secret Sauce. I want to say thank you again to Wellness Warrior Chris and Sarge. I appreciate it. Sarge, do you have any other final thoughts as we wrap up this episode? Um, not really. I mean, I'm. I mean, there's. I have. I've, I mean, like always, I, I speak to inspirational people and I take notes, and I feel yep. like a bit of a naughty boy because I haven't. I haven't looked after myself. So you know, I'm taking. I'm taking a lot away from this conversation. Yeah. Well, Sarge, I um, look forward to seeing you next week. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll be soon. I mean, yeah, this next week's gonna be a bit, a bit crazy for me, but sooner, sooner than later. A baby, right? Yeah. 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 yeah right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, so yeah, so the, the world's kind of either you or your missus definitely needs the hyperbaric chamber, which is like time out, you know, like to give you time to relax and catch up on that lost sleep you're gonna not have soon. <laughs> yeah, well, already I, I can, yeah, I'm, I'm carrying the, the badges <laughs> of, of young kids, but yeah, okay. definitely, I'll, I'll be definitely coming down for a visit. All right, mate, look forward awesome. to seeing you. All right, right. another Thanks, wonderful. Thanks, episode. Chris. Thank you very Thanks, much, Chris. That's it All for right. now, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you.